Hello friends, welcome to Wow IS. This is the part 6 of the June 2023 current affairs. In this, we are going to cover the security portion of the June 2023 current affairs. In the, we, we are doing this in our initiative in which we are providing you crisp summaries of the Vision Monthly magazine in not more than 50 pages. And it is only available at 5.99 rupees. The videos are free for all and you can go to YouTube channel and watch them. However, to access the PDF, you need to enroll in the course. So let's start with today's topic. The first topic is security. Here, illegal immigration and internal security. There has been violence in the between Manipur Kuki's tribe and the majority Maitri tribe. And it has been continuing in the several parts of Manipur. The root of the violence is a 10 year old demand by the non-tribal Maitri community for a scheduled tribe status. The trigger point has been when the Manipur High Court ordered to ordered government to recommend an ST tag for the community to the Ministry of Tribal Affairs. Now there has been instability in Myanmar, which is also uh, which is also one of the reasons for this uh, for this conflict. There has been a military coup in Myanmar in 2021, and around 4,000 refugees are said to have entered Manipur. The refugee, refugees belonging belonging to Kuki Kinjo ethnic group, comprising Lai, Tim Dim Zomi, Lusei, and Hualengo tribe were closely related communities in the Mizoram and Manipur uh, states. Such illegal immigration is considered a threat to the internal security of the country. Now, if we talk about the ethnic composition of Manipur, there are 33 recognized tribes in Manipur that either fall under Nagas or the Kukis. Despite the socio political and linguistic differences among them, all ethnic tribes originate from the same Mongoloid group. The tribals make up 40% of Manipur's population and live largely in the hills. The Metis constitute 53% of the population and live in the Imphal Valley. Now, the process of inclusion and, inclusion, inclusion and exclusion of the scheduled tribe list. A state government recommends certain communities for the addition or subtraction from the, from the list of ST based on its discretion. The proposal is sent to the Union Ministry of Tribal Affairs. The Minister of Tribal Affairs will say, will, uh, will through its own deliberation on the proposal and send it to the Registrar General of India. Once approved by the Registrar General of India, the proposal is sent to the National Commission for Scheduled Tribes. After these institutions concur, the proposal goes forward to the Cabinet to bring in the appropriate amendment to the Constitutional Scheduled Tribes Order 1950. The final decision rests, rests with the President's office issuing a notification specifying the changes in the underpower vested it, in it from the Article 341 and 342. Next is how illegal immigration is a threat to the internal security. So this is one of the questions that can be asked in the main source as well. First of all, it is a threat to national security. Secondly, human trafficking occurs there. In the recent decades, trafficking of women and human smuggling has become quite rampant across the border. Then it increases community tension. It also puts financial burden. Also, there is a uh, there are illegal voters because most of the illegal voters got their name and listed in the voting list illegally, thereby claiming themselves as citizens of the state. Then there is a crisis of identity. The influx of the immigrants created a crisis of identity among the indigenous people of the region. Then environmental degradation. Large areas of the forest land were encroached upon by the immigrants for settlement and cultivation. Reasons for illegal immigration. Ethnic, linguistic and religious commonalities between the illegal immigrant, immig migrants and native citizens. Second is persecution of minority community in the neighboring countries. Then porous borders and difficult terrain are hard to monitor, makes the border hard to monitor. Then possible employment opportunities in India is also one of the reasons for illegal immigration in India. Then what are the laws in place to tackle the illegal immigration? First one is Foreign Act of 1946. The central government can deport illegal foreign nationals. Second is Passport Entry into India Act of 1920. To remove an illegal foreigner by force has been entrusted to all state governments. Then Citizenship Act of 1955, it provides for the acquisition and determination of Indian citizens. Next is, what can be the way forward? First of all, there need to be a holistic refugee policy that, should, that, will, that is framed by the central government. Secondly, India should make diplomatic efforts to get neighboring countries to cooperate as illegal migration cannot be solved unless the origin country cooperates. 
नेक्स्ट यूनिक आइडेंटिटी कार्ड शुड बी इश्यूड फॉर द बॉर्डरलैंड पीपल हु फ्रीक्वेंटली यूज टू क्रॉस बॉर्डर फॉर डिफरेंट रीजन देन फेंसिंग ऑफ बॉर्डर इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट then the use of regional forms like bimstek can be used to discuss issues like illegal migration from neighboring countries and garner support and coordination from the members and also better management of border is required next topic is private military company or pmc recently there has been a rebellion in russia by the wagner group a private military group or pmc Now, what are these PMCs? PMC refers to a privately owned and operated organization that provides military and security services on a contractual basis. So, they are military on contract. The Wagner Group is also known as PMC Wagner, is controlled indirectly by Russian military and intelligence, which supply it with weapons and also provide Russian military facilities for training. The group was first identified in 2014 while backing pro-Russian separatist separatist forces in eastern Ukraine. and it is said that the group was involved in russia russia's capture of bakhmut city in ukraine the group has operated in conflict ridden africa and arab countries other notable instances are blackwater now known as academy it is in, it operates in iraq and is contracted by united states government to provide security services during the iraq war in 2007 then executive outcomes a south african pmc hired by angolian government operated in operated in angola in 1990s during the civil war then saint line international a british pmc involved in papua new guinea in late 90s now what are the factors that drive that drive the rise in pl- uh, private military companies first of all the outsourcing of security the private com- army supplement government security efforts of cost effectiveness flexibility and desire to maintain a smaller standing military they are apt for sub- sensitive missions then they have the technological advancements also they can be also they can be employed to provide military training advisory support or security assistance to government or rebel groups aligned with a certain geopolitical interest next there are legal ambiguities the lack of clear international regulations and oversight regarding the activities of private armies has also allowed them to operate in a legally gray area now what are the issues first of all the issue of accountability they lack the accountability secondly they can ha- they can be they can impact the state sovereignty they operate in conflict zone or provide security services that are traditionally the responsibility of government this is potentially undermining the state's authority and control over security matters then there is a conflict of interest also because they they work for the profit and which can compromise the impartiality integrity and effectiveness of their services then the implications on the local communities the presence of pmc in conflict or post conflict settings can have social and economic implications for bad communities such as displacement resource exploitation or socio cultural tensions regulating pmcs ensure their use in both legal they ensure their both is use their, their use is both legal and legitimate then guarantee they do not they do not in any way undermine the sovereignty of states then prevent them from shifting between legal and illegal pursuits then make certain that they are transparent as possible and ensure they do not undermine the government policy the international laws and their applicability to pmc icc or international criminal court it if a state party refuses to investigate an employee of a pmc suspected of war crimes and registered within its jurisdiction the icc could initiate its own investigation so icc is one of the area where you can go then state responsibility as per international law commission articles on state responsibility 2001 states are responsible for activities of non state actors working on their behalf of the state however state responsibility only extends to other states not to the individuals third is international humanitarian law it provides clear rules on the combat status of individual employees of pmcs though only in cases of international and civil conflicts Next is news in short. Cipri Yearbook 2023. Cipri released its annual assessment of the state of armaments, disarmament and international security. Key findings. USA has the largest number of deployed nuclear warheads followed by Russia, France and Ukraine, UK, while Russia has the highest total inventory of nuclear warheads followed by USA and China. India, China, Pakistan, North Korea and Israel have no deployed nuclear warheads. India has a total of 164 nuclear warhead stockpiles. 
Overall, the number of nuclear warheads continues to decline, primarily due to U.S. and Russia dismantling their retired war warheads. However, China is modernizing and expanding its nuclear arsenal. India and Pakistan also appear to be increasing the size of their nuclear weapon inventories. Now, CIPRI, CIPRI is an independent international institute dedicated to research in conflict, armament, and arm control and disarmament. Second news is Agni Prime or Agni P. It's a new generation ballistic missile, missile Agni Prime was successfully flight tested by DRDO. It is a two-stage canister solid propellant ballistic missile with a dual redundant remediation and guidance system. Range is 1000 to 2000 kilometers. It is lighter than all earlier Agni series missiles. Agni missiles form the backbone of India's nuclear deterrence. Agni 125 surface to uh, surface to surface ballistic missiles are designed and developed by DRDO. So DRDO is responsible. Successful training launch of the medium range ballistic missile Agni 1 was carried out by Strategic Forces Command from APJ Abdul Kalam Island in Odisha. So this is another news there. Now next is MH-60R Romeo helicopter. The Indian Navy achieved a unique feat after MH Romeo multi-mission helicopter landed on the indigenously built aircraft carrier INS Vikrant. About this helicopter, it is manufactured by Lockheed Martin Corporation and is an all-weather helicopter designed to support multiple missions, state-of-art avionics and sensors. It is a versatile platform and has exceptional anti-submarine warfare, surveillance, anti-shipping, search and rescue capabilities. The next is Varunastar. It is indigenously designed, developed, ship-launched anti-marine anti -marine torpedo. So it is a torpedo. It is developed by Vizag based Na Naval Science and Technological Laboratory under DRDO and is manufactured by Bharat Dynamics Limited. Next is, its maximum speed is 40 knots and maximum operating depth is 60 meters. Has a, it has a long range with multi-maneuvering capabilities. Next is Tapas. Tapas is an unmanned aerial vehicle. It is indigenously developed and is a medium altitude long endurance UAV or male UAV. It is designed and developed by Bengaluru based Aeronautical Development Establishment or ADE. It is capable of carrying different cap uh, combinations of payload like medium range electro optics, long range electro optics, synthetic aperture radar to perform mission during the day and night. Endurance is more than 18 hours and can operate in a, at an altitude of 28,000 feet. It can carry a payload up to 350 kg. Next is BEOSP or Brain Electrical Oscillation Signature Profiling. So it is a neuropsychological method of interrogation. It is designed to bring up the information which could be hidden in person's brain by sensing brain's wave responses respective to words, phrases or picture presented. It is carried out by a process known as electroencephalogram conducted to study the elect electrical behavior of human brain. Now, unlike polygraph text test, test, it does not involve a question answer session with the accused. In polygraph test, accused person's psychological indicators are taken into account, which include blood pressure, pulse rate, respiration, skin conductivity. Brain mapping is considered much more credible than the polygraph test. Applications It determines the participation of accused in a crime, medical diagnosis and treatment of neurological diseases like Alzheimer, counter terrorism by probing the possibility of a terrorist act by an individual. Then in Selvi v. State of Karnataka 2010, Supreme Court stated narco analysis, polygraph and brain mapping test cannot be forced upon any individual without their consent and test results cannot be admitted solely as evidence. Operating mechanism. Picture words shown to an individual. These are, this is the op operator, operating mechanism. A stimulus will be given. Then it will trigger the neurons of the brain. It will generate a brain wave known as P300. Then this data will be studied during a, using a computer program and it will be evaluated the person is guilty or not or whatever news we need. Then what are the exercises that are in use? First one is exercise Ekrat. It is between India and Maldives. Then Eku Verin. It is between Indian Army and Maldives National Defense Force. Then A Khan Quest of 2023. It is our Indian Army participated in the X Khan Quest in Mongolia, a multinational peacekeeping joint exercise. So with this, we complete today's session. We shall come up with the next session in which we are going to discuss the polity part. So thank you very much and have a very nice day.